let's discuss the topic on compound epicyclic gaitering which is also called sun and planet gear so in this arrangement okay we have an uh, epicyclic gaitering arrangement which includes uh, a compound gear so the arrangement is uh, as shown so we have uh, two coaxial shafts as you can see we have two coaxial shaft s1 and s2 and on s1 on s1 you have a gear okay gear a so this gear a is called a annular gear so this has got an internal teeth so the gear a is fixed to the shaft s1 now if this internal gear a okay is in mesh with a compound gear b and c you have a compound gear b and c which is on the same shaft here so this in turn okay as uh, meshed with a sun gear c and this compound gear is held by a arm okay which is connected to the shaft s2 which is connected to the shaft s2 now if the sun gear uh the shaft s1 and the shaft s2 okay they are all uh, coaxial but uh, uh, the motion of uh, each of the element is independent of the other so uh, the same uh, view okay which is shown in the side view okay you have uh, the larger annular gear and uh, you have uh, the arm so this is the arm h and uh, you have a sun gear d okay the sun gear d and you have a compound gear bc so annular gear is in mesh with b and uh, the compound uh, the gear c is uh, meshing with the sun gear h now in this okay you you may have to find out what is the uh, speed and direction of rotation of some of the gear okay so we will discuss that with tabular uh, column method so the theory behind uh, this whatever i just described are uh, given in these slides now uh what we'll do is so coming back to this figure again now if in this arrangement okay in this arrangement let us say if the annular gear is fixed so the power will be the drive will be given by the sun gear and uh, if the sun gear is fixed the drive will be given by the annular gear and in both the cases the arm acts like a follower so what we'll do is so initially in the tabular method we'll consider the arm to be fixed and give one rotation to the sun gear and when you give one rotation to the sun gear okay uh, in the positive direction i mean to say in anti clockwise direction if i give one rotation for the sun gear so the compound gear will rotate in the opposite direction okay anti clockwise uh, if this is anti clockwise this will rotate in clockwise and where these two gears are meshed okay so this is meshing with an internal uh, uh, teeth gear that is annular gear so whatever the direction of the compound gear will it, uh, even the annular gear will be having the same uh, direction of rotation so if the sun gear rotates in uh, anti clockwise direction both the compound gear and the annular gear will rotate in clockwise direction so in the tabular column so when the arm is fixed and you will give one rotation to the sun gear okay so in that case arm is fixed so it is given zero so the number of elements uh in the gear train would be you have an arm you have gear d compound gear as well as gear a so initially we'll be giving one rotation to the sun gear okay so the sun gear is in mesh with the compound gear so the sun gear is mesh the gear d is meshing with gear c so the speed of the compound gear c and c would be equal to td by tc but it will be in the opposite direction so that is why minus is put and into uh, nd so nd here is 1 so this is the equation that you get for a speed of 
uh, C of gear C. Now, uh, later, now on the same shaft, okay, on the same shaft uh, we have uh, gear B and uh, gear C. They are uh, compound gears, so they have the same speed. But the gear B is in meshing with gear A. The gear B is meshing with gear A. And uh, since uh, it is meshing with gear A, which has got internal teeth, so whatever the direction the compound gear rotates, the same direction your gear A also will rotate. So, so both will have the same direction of rotation. So if this is negative, this also will be negative. And to find out what is the speed, okay, uh, at which the gear A rotates, so the gear A, uh, so it is N A. So if you want to find out N A, okay, uh, so N A would be so. So coming back to this diagram, so we are interested in finding uh, uh, N A. Okay, so the input uh, will be giving one rotation to sun gear that is D. So uh, what we can do is uh, N A by N D. Okay, so N A by N D. Okay. Uh, equation can be written down so after writing out na by nd equation so uh, we'll get it as td by tc because uh, uh, the gear sun gear is meshing with uh, gear c okay and uh, next it's a compound gear so tb by ta so what you'll be having here is uh, mm, what we require is na so na okay na by nd is uh, We'll get it as this is the equation that we get. So once we get this equation, now uh, for the sun gear we had given uh, one rotation. So if for the same element, if we give uh, x rotations, keeping the arm fixed, so what would be the rotation for the compound gear and the gear A? So we just have to multiply these terms by into x. So individually, we'll be giving y rotations for each of the elements. So y is being added. And the total rotation for each of the element, you just have to add the elements in the uh, second and the third row. So this and this we have to add, or uh, this column, this and this, this element and this. So the net motion is given by y. The net motion of the gear D is x plus y. So the net motion of the compound gear, as well as the net motion of gear A. So using these equations, you can find out what is the revolution of each of the element. And a few conditions would be given. So, what would be the arm rotation? What would be the, uh, let us say, gear A is fixed or gear D is fixed? In such case, x plus y becomes zero if gear D is fixed. So, using those uh, conditions, we'll be able to find out the uh, remaining uh, revolutions or rotations for the different gears. So, we'll try to demonstrate. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate this with a problem. So, in this problem. Uh, it's the statement goes like this an epicyclic gear consists of three gears a b and c which is as shown so you have an epicyclic gear so a b and c are the three gears so the gear a has 72 internal teeth gear c has 32 external teeth the gear b meshes with both a and c and is carried on an arm ef which rotates around the center of a at 18 rpm so what he has given is he has given the teeth of a as well as c but uh, the teeth of uh, b is not given and uh, the the rated uh, the the rotation of the arm is given the arm ef uh, so it is 18 rpm if the arm if the gear a is fixed determine the speed of gear b and c so that is the condition which is given so so as you can see you have the annular gear which is meshing with uh, uh, this is a gear what you have here gear b and you have a gear c and uh, the arm is uh, this ef so it, he has given the number of teeth on a and c so we just have to find out the teeth on b so that can be done using this radius so radius of a is equal to radius of c plus okay uh, diameter of b so you can use that and since a pizzicle diameter uh, can be written as proportional to their teeth, so we can find out the teeth in the gear B. So the corresponding tabular column for that, so 
so the number of elements what you have you have gear a gear b gear c and an arm so initially what we'll do is uh, he says that okay he has given that uh, if the gear a is fixed okay gear a is fixed so the outer gear uh, when it is fixed he's asking you to find out the uh, rpm of uh, b as well as c so what we'll do is uh, we'll fix the arm arm initial condition arm being fixed and give one rotation to gear c so then we'll try to find out what is the rotation experienced by gear b as well as gear a so that is written here arm is fixed and we'll give one rotation to gear c that is plus 1 so since uh, gear c is meshing with gear b so the corresponding equation would be um, speed of b that is nb okay nb by nc is equal to tc by tb so it's a negative sign because so the gear b will rotate in a direction opposite to gear a and uh, coming to uh, the speed of gear b so gear uh, sorry gear a gear a is uh, meshed with gear b internally so whatever direction b rotates the same direction gear a also will rotate so uh, the direction of rotation of gear b and gear a are same so you have uh, negative signs so now you have to find out what is the speed of gear a so speed of gear a so n a uh, uh, provided you have uh, n a by n c if you do n a by n c okay so since we have a uh, n a by n c you have to find out so n a by n c is so whatever teeth you have uh, sorry no, whatever gears you have in between so it is uh, n a by n c i was talking about so n a by n c would be equal to uh, product of number of teeth on the driven divided by product of number of teeth on the driver so the number of teeth on the driven uh, if that is the case so th the so or or else what we can do is that also can be used or else uh, we want uh, na by uh, nc is what we have given uh, nc so na by nc uh, can be written as uh, um, just a minute here uh, you have uh, na by uh, nc so na is meshing with uh, uh, gear b so that is equal to na by uh, nb into nb by nc can be written so and uh, you get that equation so uh, na by nb is uh, tb by ta okay tb by ta and uh, uh nb by uh, nc okay nb by nc is tc by tb tc by tb so using that equation so finally uh, number of teeth on uh, these two gears they get cancelled out so what you get is tc by ta so in the first uh, row we had assumed the arm to be fixed and uh, we have given one rotation to gear c so in the second uh, row we'll assume the same thing but we'll be giving x rotation to uh, gear C so we just have to multiply the above equation uh, by X so individually we'll be giving Y rotation to each of the element and the total motion of each of the element uh, is got by adding the elements in the second and the third uh, uh, row so this is the net uh, rotation of the arm net rotation of the gear net rotation of gear B and net rotation of gear A now coming to the condition that he says that the arm is uh, rotated by 18 rpm okay the arm uh, 18 rpm and uh, since it's a positive value so we'll assume that the arm rotates in the anti clockwise direction okay and uh, and also gear a is fixed so arm so y is equal to 18 gear a is fixed so this will become 0 uh, so the value for tc and ta number of teeth on uh, gear c and gear a it's already been given so simplifying that you will be getting the value of x okay so speed of the arm so y they have given so gear a is fixed 
so it is zero that equation y minus x into tc by ta is zero so substituting the value for tc and ta and the value for y the only unknown is x here so after simplifying you'll get the value of x so now what is asked is speed of gear c so speed of gear c gear c is x plus y so once you get the value of x so y is also known so speed of gear c is x plus y which comes to around 58.5 so it's a positive value so it means that gear c will rotate in the same direction as that of the arm now he has also asked the speed of gear b okay so we need number of teeth on gear b so for that to find out the number of teeth we'll be using so the radius of gear a will be equal to radius of gear c plus diameter of gear b so using that equation okay uh, in terms of d everything is written in terms of d here so pit circle diameter is proportional to teeth so using this equation we know the the teeth on c as well as a you can calculate the teeth on b so t b comes to around 20 teeth so using uh, the teeth okay so we know the value of uh, number of teeth on gear b so the speed of gear uh, b when uh, gear a is fixed so this is the equation so in this uh, y and x we already know y is 18 and uh, x value corresponding to when gear a is fixed we have already calculated that so now we uh, calculated what is the number of teeth on gear b so tc is already been given so you just calculate substitute it everything and uh, calculate that so you will get the value of uh, the speed of gear b comes around to minus 46.8 rpm so it's a negative value which means that it rotates in the direction opposite to that of the arm so coming to a next problem on uh, so in this uh, internal wheel b with 80 teeth is key to a shaft f so you have a gear here so which has got internal teeth 80 teeth which is key to a shaft f a fixed internal wheel c with 82 teeth is concentric with b so one more gear which has got 82 teeth is concentric with this uh, wheel b a compound wheel de gears with two internal wheels so uh, the power is transmitted between these two internal wheels using this compound uh, gear so on this compound gear the d has got 28 teeth and uh, the teeth on e is not mentioned and the e uh, and the d will gear with c and e will gear with b the compound wheel revolves freely on a pin which projects from a disc key to a shaft a which is coaxial with f so the arm on which the compound wheels are mounted uh, it is fixed to one more shaft a which is coaxial with f if the wheels have the same pitch and the shaft a makes 100 rpm so shaft a is connected to the arm so it means that arm makes 100 rpm what is the speed of shaft f so if we sketch the arrangement you have two internal uh, uh, you have two wheels which has got internal teeth one is uh, uh, gear b and another one is gear c gear b is coupled to uh, connected to shaft f and uh, the gear c it is not connected to this shaft but it is coaxial so these are two compound gears d and e so e is meshing with b d is meshing with c and the compound uh, wheels are uh, uh, held by this arm okay which is connected to the shaft uh, a so this arrangement uh, in the side view can be okay this is a sectional view and the side view can uh, be shown like this now he is asking you if, uh, when the gear c is fixed what is the speed of uh, f so uh, number of teeth on all the gear has been given except e so to find out e okay we can uh, find out that using this diameter concept 
so here uh, we can consider diameter or radius so this radius from uh, radius of c or radius of b okay so radius of b is equal to so this is the wheel uh, b radius of b is equal to radius of c minus of uh, so minus this distance you want to uh, find out so so the distance from here to here so uh, this distance would be so the from the pin if you take uh, the pin as a center so from here to here uh, it would be the diameter of the d and whereas from here to here it would be the di uh, sorry uh, radius of e so from here to here it would be radius of d from here to uh, here it would be radius of e so using the equation we can find out now uh, to solve this uh, the number of elements we have to identify so the number of elements what we have is four elements that is uh, b c and this compound gear so one two and three and uh, you have this arm the four elements so in the tabular method okay so we can uh, represent all the four elements and uh, corresponding uh, conditions can be written and initially uh, as i told to find out the number of teeth on e okay we'll be representing in terms of diameter so and diameter is proportional to teeth so the only unknown is uh, the number of teeth on e so we'll be calculating that that comes to around 26 so for writing the tabular column so the four elements so the arm the wheel b compound gear and the wheel c so those are the arm the wheel b compound gear and the wheel c so we'll try to uh, fix the arm and give uh, one rotation to wheel b okay so we'll fix the arm so arm is fixed so its uh, speed is zero and we'll give one rotation to wheel b so wheel b is in mesh with compound gear e so uh, the speed of uh, the compound gear would be n e by uh, n b is equal to t b by t e okay so you get this uh, t b by t e and uh, uh, we have given one rotation to the wheel b uh, let us say in anti clockwise direction so which is taken as positive here uh, so the wheel B has got internal teeth it is meshing with compound gear which has got external teeth so whatever direction wheel B will rotate the same direction even compound gear will rotate so it is positive and this compound gear uh, is meshing with one more uh, wheel which has got internal teeth so wheel C also will rotate in the same direction as that of a compound gear so the speed of wheel C okay the speed uh, the speed of uh, wheel C that is NC uh, by ND can be written using this equation so after that so in the second uh, row you can write assume that uh, the same arm is fixed and you'll be giving X rotation to the wheel B so correspondingly you'll be multiplying X to the above equations and individually you give Y rotation to each of the elements so that is uh, shown in row 3 and in the fourth row what is the net motion experienced by each of the element so we just have to add these two elements so it's been added here in the fourth row now the condition which is given is wheel C is fixed so when wheel C is fixed it means that the speed of wheel C is fixed in the sense it is 0 so this becomes a 0 so if this is 0 and uh, they have given that the arm makes okay the shaft makes 800 rpm so the shaft is uh, key to arm so arm will make 800 rpm so arm is y so y is 800 so and this entire term is 0 so we know all the values of uh, the number of teeth and all the gears so the only unknown is x so we will be calculating the x value so from that x value we will get it as minus 762 and what he has asked is what is the speed of the 
shaft F. So speed of shaft F. So shaft F is connected to wheel uh, B. So the speed of shaft F is x plus y. So we know the values of both uh, x and y. Okay, x is minus uh, 762 and uh, y is 800 and uh, we get it as plus 38 rpm so it is 38 rpm in anti clockwise 